Hi everybody, my name's Tom. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I want to show you a really fun little painting and use it as an opportunity to talk about wet into wet in watercolour. So this is that kind of famous characteristic of watercolour. It's the unique thing I feel that separates it from so many of the other mediums. And working wet into wet can create this variety of amazing effects, everything from very soft flowing colours to kind of lost and soft edges. It can also create some beautiful depth to the shadows. So this is something I'm going to talk about a lot in this video. Now, wet into wet work is very much down to the relationship between the amount of water and pigment in your brush, mixes on your palette, and the level of dryness or dampness on your page. So this relationship will give you different levels of wet into wetness, or you could call it damp into damp, damp into wet. I'll be talking a lot about the paint consistency in terms of anything from kind of milky through to creamy to to very thick. And the state of the page being anywhere from very wet right through to nearly dry. I've got another video where I go a lot deeper into all of this. And this was a painting I did quite a while back for an online Zoom course. And there's a 25 minute time-lapse version over on my School of Watercolour. Obviously loads of other videos over there. I talk about these wet into wet principles and tons of other techniques. If it's something you might be interested in, please do check it out. I also have some Zoom demos coming up and another course which is painting the figure in watercolour. These are all happening kind of November, December 2023 if you're watching this before that time. All of the links in the description. Let's dive into it. So I'm going to start off with very, very watery yellow and I quite often find that I map out my paintings with yellow leaving lots of whites of the page, very, very watery. I may bring up the consistency to be kind of a little bit more pigment, but still very, very free flowing. Then I move into the slightly warmer orangey color. It's kind of like full fat milk paint consistency. So a little bit more pigment, but still very free flowing. Most of these lighter tones are somewhere between kind of watery tea to kind of full fat milk, if you want to give it that description. So a good amount of pigment, but also loads of water. It's got that free flowing nature. When we're doing this, the colours are very much washing and flowing together. Now, as the page begins to dry, plus I bring up the paint consistency to be a little bit creamier, you'll notice that the colours are richer and stronger. The tone is a little bit darker. And whilst the colours are still flowing together because there's dampness on the page and a little bit of water in the mix, they're not flowing together as much. They're not washing together and merging as much. So that's what I would call like the light family drifting into some shadowy tones. I'm now going to take the exact same principle of working wet into wet, but we're going to bring the paint consistency up to be a little bit creamier yet again, what we might call single cream in the UK, kind of half and half cream uh, in other places. And this is going to give us a darker tone which we're drifting into the shadows, but there's still plenty of moisture in the brush and in the mix so that the colours still soften and flow together. And I tend to think of this a little bit more kind of damp into damp. There's still plenty of moisture in the mixture. I may be working into a wet part of a painting because I've just laid down the shadow, but the pigment is a little bit stronger and there's less water. It's less free flowing. So you have to work a little bit harder to get the colours flowing. But once I've laid in that kind of gentle shadow using the creamier tone, you'll see that I'm coming back in with very, very thick, creamy pigment. There's still moisture in the brush, but if I was to turn my palette on the side, that paint is not going to flow on the palette. It's kind of stickier, creamier, what we might call double cream, drifting into kind of whipping cream. And you'll notice a recurring pattern to the way that I tackle any area. Start very watery for the lights coming up to kind of milky consistency. Knock in the, the lighter or more gentle shadow with the sort of light cream mixture. We're, we're talking consistency here, not colour. Now, as that consistency begins to dry off a little bit, I come in with the much thicker, heavy cream consistency. And that creates this lovely softness in the shadows. This is something I'm always looking for is kind of soft, fuzzy, damp into damp shadows, very free flowing, wet into wet light areas. And then you will find that if you just pick out a few little spots of detail like I'm doing now, that's enough to make sense of all of the lovely wet into wet areas. And the very final thing I want to point out is because of that variation of dampness and wetness in the page, 
paint consistency and my brush, we've got a whole variety of different edges here. Everything from completely free flowing where you can't tell where one color becomes another through to kind of soft and lost edges of varying degrees of softness right through to the harder, sharper edges provided by generally the white of the page or the lighter colors trapped by a slightly darker wash behind it to use the negative shape to throw it out. There we go guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that gave you some insight into working wet into wet in watercolour. Really fun subject for it. As I said before, links to all of the places you can find me are in the description and the pinned comment for links to the watercolour school and some upcoming demos. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Happy painting and I'll catch you soon.